Good morning and a warm welcome to you wherever you are for this Eucharist with Spiritual Communion on this Passion Palm Sunday. Uh, we have chosen today to look at both faces of this day and the image you had on your screen earlier ties together the palms with the crown of thorns because this is the beginning of Holy Week and this is the first step in our journey of Holy Week, even though it is not the first step of Passion Tide. So as we walk through this service, there will be some walking in the imagination. There is a procession, uh, and uh, I don't know whether you're going to get up and walk around wherever you are, you're free to do so. But in your imagination, please feel free to process with your palms. I've spoken to a few people who have a variety of bits and pieces of green stuff uh, to commemorate the procession, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And then we will move into the Passion Liturgy. So welcome to a service that uh, is beautiful uh, and a little contradictory uh, in its complexity. As we move through uh, Eucharist today, uh, let us remember Peter Needham, and give thanks for his life. Uh, remember Jill and his family as they mourn. We will remember too Robin offered whose funeral is tomorrow. And uh, let us also carry in prayer Armel, who uh, defends his doctoral thesis tomorrow. And I know that's a, a huge undertaking. Our prayers are with your family, uh, indeed, from wherever we are. To you, O Zion, meek and lowly, sitting upon an ass, ride on in the cause of truth and for the sake of justice. Your throne is the throne of God, which endures forever, and the scepter of your kingdom is a righteous scepter. You have loved righteousness and hated evil. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Oh,
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die, to rise again, let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. As we hold up our palms and branches, God our Saviour, who son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Let us go forth, praising Jesus, our Messiah.
my brothers and sisters, as we prepare to walk with Christ through his passion to the light of Easter, let us call to mind and confess our sinful nature. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city. On our world, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. On us, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for a closer union with Christ in his suffering and in his glory. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, Grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way to the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. Amen. A prayer as we await the arrival of our new chaplain, Canon Daphne Green. God of grace, God of glory, holy trinity, diversity in unity, we thank you that you have set us in this place, blessed by the beauty of your creation, where history witnesses to longing for freedom, justice, and peace. We thank you for our church and community, where we have found a welcome, have worshiped and learned, cared, loved, and grown. In this time of change, May we support one another, cherishing the gifts of the past while building together a new tomorrow. As we journey onwards with a song of hope on our lips, may our vision be inspired by the heights which surround us, encouraging us to step out joyfully on the paths that lie ahead, seeking your wisdom and your will to move with generosity into the future you would have us form. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I should not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love me. 
mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, my soul and my body also. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of my affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they flee from me. I am forgotten like one that is dead out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd, fear is on every side. They scheme together against me and plot to take my my trust is in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. Today's reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2 verses five to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, and so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Christ humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory be to thee, O Lord. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him. You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again. Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, at the festival... He used to release a prisoner for them. 
anyone who, for whom they asked. Now, a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Spy Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back. Crucify him! Pilate asked them. Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the King of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani. Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. This is the passion of the Lord.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a day of celebration, of extravagance. It is also a day of ambiguity, where some may struggle to find unity in the range of the narrative of emotion and of our response to them. Thank you to Ellen and Claire for giving voice to our passion gospel, the shorter version. In the much longer version, the reading begins with a story of extravagance, which you know probably, where Jesus is anointed with the very costly vial of nard. The action of the woman who anoints him attracts attention and criticism. It could be much better spent on the poor. Fair enough but the poor are always with us. So should we not just now and then splash out a little on God? Then the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, where the people throw palms and their coats into the path of the Christ mounted on a donkey. The prophetic sign from Zechariah of who this is. Yet another extravagance reserved for a triumphant presence. So the week, this holy week, begins with recognition of the richest kind. First, that ointment is an anointment, an established practice to identify someone set apart for kingship, priesthood, or high office. David, we recall, is anointed by Samuel in the Levite priesthood, among others. This act of the woman is no accident. It shouts out. This is the anointed one, which is the meaning of the word Messiah and its Greek equivalent, Christos, O Christos, the Christ. The palms are a symbol of victory, of triumph strewn with great clamor, welcoming the anointed one of God come to save and to release. The Messiah King riding to victory in the holy city of David. But the extravagances of the first part of the week are nothing compared to the extravagance of its climax, its ending. The extraordinary gift of this anointed one of God as the sacrificial lamb of God in this new expression of Passover. There are those, and maybe there are some with us today, who like Palm Sunday to be just that, a joyful excursion, waving greenery in jubilant celebration. But that would, I contend, fail to place these events into their proper context, the reality of the passion and the cross on a bare hill. For that is where Mark, with Jesus as his voice, is pointing us. The entry into Jerusalem is full of expectancy. The people of Israel are longing for the promised rescuer. But what they get isn't what they anticipate, and maybe what they don't even want. The anointed one, the promised king, is not what they expect. Yes, Christ's rule may come with power, but it's a hugely different understanding of power from any earthly norm. And our Lord leads us through this thinking in his preliminary discourse and in his conversation with Pilate, blind as we might be to it. It demands of us all a substantial paradigm shift. For Christ does not become king until he is lifted up exalted on the cross, arms outstretched at his most helpless, he is at the peak of his power. The victory is won only because he is prepared to lose. And in what is lost, we discover what is found. And it offers a very different model of kingship. For me, Palm Sunday then doesn't make sense unless it's seen and celebrated 
in the context of the days that follow. So let us engage with the ambiguity of both gospel reason, readings and exploit them to put our thinking into the right perspective. Let us now prepare ourselves to walk these days in the right mind and with a humble heart. In our pilgrimage, are we too willing to celebrate the joyfulness and put off the unpalatable truths of walking with him until we can dodge them no longer? Do we avoid, as some do, the sombre weight of Good Friday, the most solemn day of our own atonement, where the sins of the world are laid on the shoulders of the scapegoat, the sacrificial lamb? But we are with him in any case, for we are the burden he carries, our obsessions with the self, our worldly priorities weigh him down. And our incapacity to let them go means he must take them from us and carry them on to the triumphant completion where it is finished. There is more triumph and greater power on Good Friday than in the rather momentary celebration of this triumphal entry. For good reasons, our palms, our symbol of victory, are in the form of a cross. And do we make an image of the Christ and of his kingship in our own imagination? believing him to be what we prefer rather than who he really is? Do we invest sufficiently in understanding who God means him to be, such that we can identify with him and know him? Do we eat and drink his very self so that we might be strengthened to do as he does? How ready are we to kneel, to stoop low and wash the feet of the world in love, out of love, to right the wrongs of social and economic justice, to hear the unwelcome truths of others who speak out, to take real action in all the failures of humankind. Are we ready for that? Can we know? perhaps even for the first time, what it means to give ourselves in love's own fullness. And when we contemplate these truths and what they demand of us, do we forsake him and flee? When he calls us to be awake, alert at least to pray with him, does our world weariness overwhelm us and we sleep, perhaps hoping that when we wake, it will all be better? By our actions, by our inaction, do we deny him once, thrice, or repeatedly? Do we, apart from the faithful few who stay at the cross, turn from it? and go back to our business. Let us walk these days, as I shall seek to do, bringing to mind those failures of my humanity, my inhumanity that weigh him down as he walks with us and we with him. We shall die with him, you and I, what he carries of us dies with him, the bitter seeds transformed into newness of life, reborn on Easter day. That is where we look this week, at the bright light that will always break as we have walked through the awful agonies to the cross. In the Passion. Jesus bridges the gap between our inadequacy, our unworthiness, 
and the triumph a week away. It is a story of unfathomable, extravagant love. Love to the loveless show that they, that we, might lovely be. Amen. Let, Let us declare our faith in God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him up on high and given to him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. We stand with, G with Christ in his suffering for forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin, which means spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christian people, that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow <clears throat> a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them, and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who weigh down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy, holy God, God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. And Lord our God, we remember Peter Needham and Robin Offord. We give thanks for their life. Rest eternal. Grant to them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. Give the comfort of your presence to their loved ones and families. And we pray for Armel as he 
presents himself this week at his doctorate discussions. May he know the strength of your presence. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please share a greeting of peace with whoever you can, however you can. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Jesus, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live, let us share in your death and passion. Make us perfect in your love. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Amen. with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and singing.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, Lord by, by your, your cross and resurrection, resurrection you, you have set, set us free. free. You, you are, are the Saviour of, of the world. world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praise into one, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. God, you 
Let us now prepare ourselves to make our spiritual communion. We offer and present to you, Lord, our Heavenly Father, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a holy and living sacrifice. Grant that being present together in heart and mind at this holy communion, we may now be filled with your heavenly blessing through the redeeming grace of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, in outward signs of bread and wine, you have made known your presence among us. As we unite with one another from the places where we are, may your communion be fulfilled in us now through the work of the life-giving Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Faithful God, may, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our, our salvation, salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on this day. Uh, and thank you for coping with a, a rather different liturgy in all its complexity. Uh, I do hope you feel nourished by what we have shared this morning uh, and that your walk through Holy Week with Jesus towards the bright light of Easter will be one that encourages and enriches you every step of the way. Thank you for being with us. Uh, I'm going to uh, say goodbye for a little while now. I'll be back in April for one service, uh, but I'm sorry I cannot be with you in Holy Week at Easter. We've got a little bit of business going on in our own parish here, and uh, I'm quite tied up with that, but my thoughts and my prayers will be with you in your own walk, and I know you'll be in very good hands. God bless you. Thank you so much to you, Chris, and to Deborah. And I think you have indeed nourished us and helped us on our way into Holy Week and through that to Easter. As Chris said, he will be with us once more in a month's time. But this really is the end of his time of looking after us. And I know I speak for everyone in saying how enormously we have appreciated and how important this has been to us over this past year. I also know that this has sometimes been quite an effort for you both to start again with a major service at the late, at late in your day, but it has meant a, meant a great deal to us. I think we've been very lucky in having the stability of three priests throughout, and we thank you for everything, and perhaps particularly in helping us with our family ministry. Can we continue to remember Valerie as she mourns, as she and her family mourn Robin? And as we've also said, can you hold Armel in your prayers over this next couple of days as he prepares and then defends his doctoral thesis tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon in Luxembourg? As Chris said, we are now into Holy Week. And Alan and Claire Amos are the good hands who will be leading us through that. Everything is still online, but we will have Sun Compline with a homily on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday at seven o'clock in the evening. And Thursday also at seven o'clock in the evening will be the Maundy Thursday Eucharist. Friday from half past one, that's 13.30 until about three o'clock, we meditate on the cross and the passion with the help of four preachers, Claire, Lawrence Twaddle from the Church of Scotland, Peniel Radhamukar from the Church of South India, and Richard Cole from Emmanuel. And please note that there won't be a 10 o'clock BCP Eucharist this Thursday, since we're having the evening service, but it will resume the following week. The service on Easter day will be at 10.30 as usual. And very many thanks to those of you who contributed to the diocesan challenge. What does Easter mean to me? And to Mark for putting together the junior choir's recording and the video. Do have a look at this. On, it's on the website and on YouTube. And at the other entries, including one from Dorinda. If there are still people up to the age of 18, who would like to submit something for the diocese, it's not too late as long as you do it today, but we do need to have it by the end of the day. 
if you're over 18, we would love any contributions for ourselves at any time during the week. Thank you all so much for doing this and to those who encouraged and made it possible. Easter is traditionally a time for making Easter bonnets. Dorinda hasn't quite done that, but she has made some extremely attractive, useful and ecologically friendly shopping bags, either with a fish pattern or with doors. They are available for sale for church funds, so do have a look. And please be generous at Easter, and I remind you of three things. The Bishop's Lent appeal for the congregation in Liège. Christians in the Middle East, many of whom are suffering greatly, and to whom we traditionally offer our Good Friday collections, and our own ongoing needs at Holy Trinity to support our ministry. Any donations to any of three of these can be made to the church, just mark clearly where you wish it to go. Any donations which are unmarked are assumed to be for the church and they are all very welcome. And we hope to see as many of you throughout Holy Week and indeed for our Easter celebration next Sunday. And now do just stay on for the breakout groups after the music and have a lovely Sunday. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you for your kind words. I must say that we have been enriched by this experience, this almost a year on and off with you. It has been uh, challenging at times. Uh, you have very high standards uh, in many ways. And it's been, uh, it's been a delight to try and uh, assist you uh, remotely through these months. Thank you very much for asking us. We hope you will eventually get to us in person. Well, I we hope so too. In fact, we've uh, we, we, we've got a little plan that uh, that we really do hope to enact whenever we can get out of the country. So, thank you. Let us receive God's blessing. May the Father, who so loved the world that He gave His only Son, bring you by faith to His eternal life. Amen. Amen. May Christ, who accepted the cup of sacrifice in obedience to his Father's will, keep you steadfast as you walk with him the way of his cross. Amen. Amen. May the Spirit, who strengthened us to suffer with Christ, that we may share his glory, set your minds on life and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.